This is actually my second disc for NMC. The first disc was a compilation of works I'd commissioned for bassett clarinet and piano. This disc differs entirely because it is a portrait of me solely as a composer, although I also feature as a clarinetist. It's different in the fact that I get to sit in the hot seat but behind the scenes this time. You know, I have the privilege of, of, of really pushing the players in the way that I'd like to be pushed in, in a performance. As much as I like to be alone and to think and to read and to write music, I am. I also have the flip side of my personality, which is to be a performer and to to stand in front of people and, and to communicate. Because, after all, music is is, is an art of communication. Yeah. And my journey as a performer as well came, again, came from the infrastructure that existed in Liverpool at the time, which was local music support service, um, free peripatetic lessons, which then went into a local county youth orchestra, then to a national youth orchestra level. Um, I, I was at the Junior Royal Northern College for a while, and then I entered Young Musician of the Year, and then my life kind of changed dramatically over the course of about a week or so. Today's recording will feature just my chamber music and the last year I've, I've worked on both an opera, a huge oratorio and an orchestral piece. So it's great to finally kind of come back to the, 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 the essence. I'm able to revisit the works that I've written since 2006 mm. in a incredibly meticulous way. So for, in, in, for instance, in, in the case of Bark and Fantasy, I was able to push Richard Utley beyond what he would necessarily do in, in a performance, which is always brilliant, by the way, but in this case, we were able to reach a new level because we could, we could really just take each section apart and try and make the, those as brilliant as, as, as possible. A lot of the works that feature on this disc are inspired by poetry or literature or kind of my experiences in certain places. And in Bark and Fantasy, that was inspired by a, a, a residency in a farm in the middle of, the, of Dartmoor and Exmoor, where I felt as though I was haunted during the, 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 the short time I was there. I was actually supposed to be there for a, a much longer time, but I couldn't bear the thought of being haunted by what I thought was some ghostly presence.
in the case of Windflower, that is inspired by one of the reimaginings of the tales of Ovid by Ted Hughes. In the case of Ariel, that is directly inspired by Sylvia Plath's poem of the same name. The very first line of the poem of Ariel by Sylvia Plath is Stasis in Darkness. And the piece begins almost from nowhere. The, 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 the instruments just barely, in the case of the violin, barely even touches the string. And the clarinet, you can barely hear the sound. The, the piano doesn't even play. I'm so privileged to be able to to have these kind of focus periods where I can spend the time on the projects that I've spent a lot of time coming to to plan and, and, and bring to fruition and then go and play the, the music that I grew up with and look. As long as the, the pendulum is is swinging smoothly between the two, I think I'd, I'd, I'd be happy as a, as, a, as a performing and musician and a composer.